fine. So, let us begin and since we have not met uh, for some time, let us do a little bit of recap today before we begin. We want to talk about matrix representation of symmetry point groups eventually, but before that let us remind ourselves what we have done. So, that is the homework. Now, what have we seen so far? We have talked about determination of symmetry point groups using the symmetry operations that are there in a molecule and this is the flow chart that we have discussed, right. And we discussed that this is a flow chart that nobody needs, is not it? Just by looking at the molecules you can figure out. The only thing you have to remember really is this C n and S 2 n that is what you should not forget, but it is a little funny. So, to start with we have discussed many examples starting with water, ok. Some of the more notable examples are ferrocene in eclipse form and we figured that it is D 5 H. Then ferrocene in staggered form we decided it is D 5 D, right. We talked about uh, T D group tetrahedral group for a, uh, quite some time and one thing to remember is this, if you have say uh, C H 3 C L, what shape is it? C H 3 C L? Not anymore, not when you are enrolled in this course. If it is CH4, then it is tetrahedral TD, right. As long as you are in this course, CH3CL would mean C3P, ok. So, please do not say that CH3CL is tetrahedral. The bonds are disposed tetrahedrally, fine, but then the molecule is not a tetrahedron, it is a C3V molecule, right, ok. And then we talked about my favorite molecule that is allene. And we all, it is D 2 D. I hope everybody remembers aline is D 2 D. And then we talked about substituted aline as well. If you substitute this hydrogen and that hydrogen by two chlorine atoms, then it does not become a C 1 molecule, the other it becomes a C 2 molecule, right. So, there is aline and substituted aline for you, ok. For those who came late, tomorrow we are going to have the class at 6 o'clock. Uh, when is your quiz? Huh? Oh, then can you have the class at 5.30? Hmm? 5.30 to 6.30, we will have a truncated class what to do, we will make up for it on Friday maybe or we will make up for it by 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes in subsequent classes or I will just give more homework. Huh. And then we talked about the octahedron and this uh, tetrahedron, octahedron these are uh, shapes in which there are more than one principal axis of symmetry that is what makes them special and that is what makes them what are called platonic solids, right. And we also talked a little bit about group subgroup relationships. We are going to come back to this later on and we are going to use this big time. And so far we are using the term group very loosely, but as you know group has a particular meaning, ok. We are going to use that proper meaning of group as well and then we will see how this group and subgroup uh, become more helpful to us than what it seems to be here. But what we said is that you start with a tetrahedron and you go on performing substitutions. On one hand, you can get from OH you can get D4H and then C4V and then C2V, which means that D4H is a subgroup of OH, C4V is a subgroup of D4H as well as OH, C2V is a subgroup of C4V, D4H as well as OH. And on the other hand, C 3 V is a different line of the family, right. It is a half brother or half sister. It is a subgroup of O H all right, but it has nothing to do with D 4 H or C 4 V or C 2 V. And later on when we talk about the symmetry operations behaving as groups and when we talk about character tables and all, then we will see how this actually becomes important and how we can simplify problems by using this group subgroup relationship. But that is a story for uh, uh, another day in future, ok. And then we had just started talking about the matrix representation of symmetry operations, right. I think what we did is we used x, y, z as the basis. Can you close the door please? And we had just start, started talking about how you can represent the different symmetry operations as matrices. And why do we suddenly feel this urge? to uh, convert uh, symmetry uh, uh, to represent symmetry operations as matrices. But as we said, we want to translate this into the language of algebra if this problem is to be simplified any further than this. 
and the way we translate is by using matrices. Okay. So, first we started with the easiest one for x, y, z what is the identity matrix? There is an identity operation we said. So, the identity matrix is your unit 3 by 3 matrix everybody knows what it is right 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 you multiply x y z by it you get x y z it is very simple. Then we have talked about reflection right reflection in which plane x y y z z x we had discussed three cases and here we have represented x y what will happen when we reflect with respect to x y plane x and y coordinates will remain unchanged and z will simply change sign. So, once again you have a diagonal matrix right all non diagonal elements are 0 and this 3 3 element is minus 1 because z changes sign upon reflection on x y ok easy and similarly you can figure out what are the matrices for y z and z x what will it be for z x 1 0 0 0 minus 1 0 0 1 right. Now, next I think we finished with rotation and we had talked about rotation by an angle theta and the way I have drawn it here it is anti clockwise is not it this is x 1 y 1 this is x 2 y 2 right anti clockwise and we said that the matrix that you get for that is cos theta minus sin theta 0 sin theta cos theta 0 0 0 1 because x 1 becomes x 1 cos theta minus y 1 sin theta, y 1 becomes x 1 sin theta plus y 1 cos theta and z 1 remains z 1. Okay, we are considering z 1 to be the rotational axis anyway. Okay. So, this is what we will uh, work out today. Just to bring in a little bit of variety, I have given you the answer here and we are going to work out the matrix for not clockwise rotation, but rather anti clockwise rotation. It is easy okay. and it is from this book Harrison Bartolucci that is where it is worked out nicely, but I think you do not even need the book it is quite simple. So, basically what we have to do is you start with this point x 1 y 1 ok and this is uh, what vector is this if I draw an arrow from origin to x 1 y 1 what is it called Anything, any other name position vector right position vector okay, I like that name better. Okay. Let us say the length is L. Okay. Can you read the L there? Huh? It is written in a little too stylized manner, but I hope it is not too much of a problem. So, that length is L. Now, let us say I rotate it by an angle theta in clockwise direction. Will the length of the position vector change? No, it will still remain x, is not it? But let us say the new coordinates are x to y2. Okay. So, what is the relationship between x 1 y 1 and x 2 y 2? They are going to be related by your length L and the angle theta. Okay. That is what will help us write x 2 y 2 in terms of x 1 y 1 and the easiest thing uh, the easiest way that one can uh, do this is by considering the x component and y component of the position vectors. It is as simple as that. Okay. If you want to do this we will need one more angle that is the angle between the position vector L original one for x 1 y 1 and either x axis or y axis. So, let us say that the angle between the position vector L and x axis is alpha. Okay. What is this angle then? Theta minus alpha. Right. Now, let us go ahead and write down the x and y components. Let us start with this. This is L 1 cos theta. We agree. Do we agree it is L 1 cos theta? I do not agree. It is L 1 cos alpha. Right? Alpha, right? Not, not theta. So, I can make mistakes. Sometimes I can make mistakes to uh, test whether you are awake. Sometimes I can make mistakes because I have made a mistake. You need to correct me in either case. Right? So, L 1 cos alpha. And what is L, not L1 cos alpha, sorry, L cos alpha. There is no L1, L2, is not it? L is same. So, L cos alpha, what is L cos alpha? It is x1, 
right x1 and what is this one l sin alpha simple and l sin alpha is what the y component y1 okay simple now if we uh, look at the transform point x2 y2 then what happens what is this? This is L cos theta minus alpha. Do we agree? Plus or minus? L cos theta minus alpha plus or minus? Plus. Okay. That is x2, x component. Right? If you have a doubt, please say and then we will go slower. No issue. Are we all convinced? That is the x, uh, x component, x2. And what will be the y component? This time it is minus, is not it? Minus L sin theta minus alpha that is your y2. Okay? Are we all good? All right. Now what do we do? I do not want theta minus alpha, is not it? What I want to do is I want to write x2 in terms of x1, y1 and theta right let us see if we can do that to do that let us recall the trigonometric relationship that we have uh, studied when we were little children studying in class 11 yeah, some of us are little children even now but what did we study in class 11 what is cos theta minus alpha cos theta cos alpha plus sin theta sin alpha right and what is sin theta minus alpha sin theta cos alpha minus cos theta sin alpha all right so you remember what we studied in childhood that is going to now uh, come very uh, turn out to be very useful okay now now let us uh, simplify this a little bit what is your x2 x2 is l multiplied by cos theta minus alpha okay L cos theta minus alpha. So, what is that then? L cos theta cos alpha plus L sin theta sin alpha. What about y2? What is y2? y2 is minus L sin theta minus alpha. What is that? minus L sin theta cos alpha plus L cos theta sin alpha, you are right. It is just that you uh, told me the second term first, but it does not really matter. It is a matter of choice. We can choose the second one to be first, no issue. Now, in the expression for x2, what is our goal? What are we trying to do? We are trying to express x2 in terms of x1 and y1. So, do you see x1? Where is x1? This, right? L cos alpha. Do you see y1? Where is y1? L sin theta? L sin alpha. L sin alpha, that is y1. And you see x1 and y1 in the expression for y2 as well. Okay? So, now what we have done is we have written x2 as x1 cos theta plus y1 sin theta. I have written y2 as minus x1 sin theta plus y1 cos theta. Is that correct? Right? And what about z1? z2, z2 equal to z1. Alright? Is the contrast okay? Can you read when I put in the boxes? Or is it difficult? So, next time I should not use such dark blue. I can change it before I send it to you. No issue. Now, what do I want to do next? I want to write it in terms of matrices. Okay? Something like this x2, y2, z2 equal to some matrix multiplied by x1, y1, z1. That is what I want to do. Okay. So, tell me now what will the matrix be? Very simple. Cos theta, sin theta, 0, then cos theta, 0. Do not say it so fast. My computer, poor computer is not able to catch up with your speed. Then 0, 0, 1. Okay? So, that is the transformation matrix 
for rotation by theta with respect to z axis in clockwise direction ok. So, similarly anti clockwise is something that you can work out work out in a similar manner there is no difference really. So, now see it is block factorizable I can divide into two blocks now dividing into blocks means I want to draw these lines in such a way that I leave all the zeros out ok. That is why I have drawn a line like this and a vertical line like this. So, that I have one block that is 2 by 2 and I have one block that is 1 by 1, 1 by 1 of course means only one number right and then all the zeros which nobody needs they are left outside the block ok. So, I can block factorize this matrix into a 2 by 2 and a 1 by 1 block ok. Before going further I would like to draw your attention to something. So, last day and today we have written down two matrices both for rotation by some angle theta one in clockwise direction one in anti clockwise direction ok and these are the matrices this is what I think I had written the previous day right for C n minus minus means anti clockwise and this is what you worked out right now C n plus ok. So, what is the similarity or difference between them? First is that it is both are block factorizable into 2 into 2 by 2 and 1 by 1 block ok and the 1 by 1 block or the number that is just 1 because z does not change line ok. It why is this 2 by 2? Because by operation of this uh, rotation by theta we are essentially mixing x and y. When you mix two coordinates then you get non-zero non-diagonal elements that is point number 1. You get 0 non-diagonal elements when the coordinates do not mix with each other unsocial coordinates they keep to themselves they either remain what they were or at most they change sign then you get a situation like this ok. But when you have non-zero non-diagonal elements what it means is that so let us think of this block as a 2 by 2 matrix this matrix works on what x 1 y 1 and gives you x 2 y 2 ok. Why is it that you have a sin theta here and minus sin theta here? Because you cannot write x 2 only in terms of x 1 you also need y 1 is not it? There is a mixing of coordinates ok Dala? fine. So, that is point number 1 non zero non diagonal element will come when there is a mixing of coordinates and point number 2 is if you look at these uh, 2 by 2 blocks what is the similarity what is the difference? The difference is the position of the sign well, position of the minus sign is not it? Yes, yes they are transposed, but what is same is the character 2 cos theta here also it is 2 cos theta. So, it does not matter if I rotate in clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction the character remains the same. Because what is the character telling you? What is the information that character gives you? Character is a trace, sorry, trace this uh, sum over i a i i, ok. So, in this case it is cos theta plus cos theta, in this case also it is cos theta plus cos theta, the diagonal just sum the uh, diagonal elements that is your character, right. So, character does not change right it is 2 cos theta in both the cases. So, the point I am trying to make is that when you have operations of the same class then they have the same character C n plus and C n minus belong to the same class is just rotating this way or the other right same axis they belong to the same class see they have same characters this is a point that we will come back to later on once again when we have a little more insight about character tables. So, uh, the other point of course that comes out is that characters can tell us a story ok and characters being invariant perhaps that is why they are called characters fine. Now, so we have you have already learned how to write down what are called uh, the matrix notation for uh, symmetry operations ok. Now, we are going to use these matrices 
to generate what are called representations of symmetry point group. And when we generate representations, what we essentially do is that we look at all the matrices together. Okay. So, what a re representation does is that it tells us about the property of a symmetry point group or it tells us uh, about a property of certain species in this symmetry point group which undergo a set of changes, a specified set of changes upon all symmetry operations, right. So, let us see what that means and let us work with the simplest point group that we have well maybe not simplest, but a very, very familiar point group that we have dealt with C2V. What is the example of C2V that we discussed? Water to start with. What about CH2, Cl2? That is also C2V, is not it? So, many other. So, let us talk about C2V and what we will do is these are the symmetry operations of C2V. By now, we know this E, C2 and we consider the z axis to be the C2 axis as usual. Z axis is always designated, not always, most of the time designated as the principal axis of symmetry. Sigma V will be then Zx and Yz right. The sigma v's have to contain the principal axis. The sigma v is denoted as zx, sigma v dashed is denoted as yz, okay. We will take this and we are going to use xyz as basis. What is the meaning of basis? I will uh, perhaps go with a more uh, general de definition. A basis is a collection of elements and of course, by elements I do not mean nickel, cadmium and all that. Basis is a collection of let us say functions on which the uh, operators operate, okay. It sounds a kind of silly, but it is general, is not it? So, this is the set of functions on which our I am going to make the uh, transformation matrices operate and then see what happens, okay. Fine. So, for this basis, let us construct the symmetry operations. What will be the matrix for E? very simple 1 0 1 0 0 0 1 because this identity identity has to be unit matrix no issue. What about C to Z? What happens when I apply C to Z? What happens to X? X coordinate X becomes minus X you agree with that? x becomes minus x. What about y? y becomes minus y. What about z? z remains invariant, okay. So, what will the matrix be? Minus 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, okay. So, see rotation by 180 degrees is a special case of rotation by theta. What we said immediately before this is that when you rotate by an angle theta, then you have a mixing of x and y but not if you rotate by 180 degrees because you rotate it in such a way that x has become minus x. So, once again we have unsocial coordinates that do not talk to, do not do not mix with each other. That is why once again we have nice diagonalized matrices. There is no non-zero non-diagonal element here, right? Because rotation by 180 degrees is such that you take a vector and you just make it negative it does not mix with the other one, okay. So, once again unlike what we had written earlier, we do not get non-zero non-diagonal elements, there is no mixing, okay. So far so good. If there is a question please ask, please feel free to ask questions that you might think are not so intelligent questions also. Sometimes those are the better questions, fine. Moving on sigma z x. Z and X are on uh, the plane, so they are not going to change sign. What about Y? Y becomes minus Y. What is the matrix? 1 0 0, 0 minus 1 0, 0 0 1, all right. Once again, no mixing. Why? Because you are taking Z X. Now, think for a minute what would happen if instead of Z X, we had to take a plane that is halfway between x and y axis goes to z right, but does not go to one of the axis. This is your z axis 
not a very good example of z axis. This is z axis. So, we are saying this is z x right, this is z y. What if the plane was somewhere say at 45 degrees between your uh, x and y planes? What would happen then? Then x and y would interchange right. So, that is uh, uh, the other end of the spectrum. Not only mixing, complete transformation x becomes y, y becomes x. What would the matrix be in that case? 0 1 0 1 0 0 0 0 1. So, what would be the, so now again you are back to your uh, blocks of 2 is to uh, 2 by 2 and 1 by 1 in that case also right 0 1 1 0. So, in this block what has happened is that the diagonal elements are 0, non diagonal elements are 1 1. So, if I want to work out the character what will be the character 0. So, this non diagonal elements do not contribute to character is not it. So, character becomes 0 in that case, but once again it is an uh, kind of an extreme case of mixing where the original coordinate does not have any co any contribution in the transform coordinate at all ok fine. Then sigma v dash y z this is very easy now y and z will not change sign x will change sign. So, what will it be minus 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 right. So, what I am saying is that these 4 matrices form a matrix representation of the point symmetry point group C to V ok, but that is only the beginning not the end because if you look closer you can conveniently break up the matrix into 3 1 by 1 blocks is not it because see all these of diagonal elements are 0 is not it. So, they contribute do not contribute to anything. So, what, what I might as well do is I might as well uh, do not write them, write only the non zero elements ok, all right. Write them a little nicely, and then of course, these brackets do not mean anything anymore, right. So, what I can do is I get rid of the brackets. Now, what do I have? I have this 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, which is a representation for x. 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 which is a representation for y 1 1 1 1 is a representation for z ok. So, we have 3 different representations for a, the 3 coordinates x y and z ok. What does this tell us? You look at this what you say is that oh, so how does x behave? x remains invariant under E it changes sign under C 2 it remains invariant under sigma v and it changes sign upon operation of sigma v dash. So, what does this tell you about? It tells you about how x behaves with respect to all the symmetry operations in the point group C to v ok. So, this is a nice symmetry description of x right. Okay. So, what we have done essentially is that we, we have found out to which symmetry species x belongs, to which symmetry species y belongs, to which symmetry species z belongs. We have defined the symmetry species all right. So, this is these are symmetry species for you ok, representation or symmetry species. So, have we at least got a semblance of understanding what is the meaning of symmetry species right. What we see is that in this case in C 2 V x and y and z they belong to 3 different symmetry species ok. So, these are symmetry species or representations and these are irreducible representations because you have uh, just 1 1 numbers right. 1 1 y 1 matrices or what we say is that the dimensionality of each of these symmetry species is 1, one dimensional irreducible representation, one dimensional representation so therefore, irreducible because dimensionality cannot be less than half right, you cannot have half the number. You remember that riddle? 
it takes eight days for four men to dig a hole. How many days does it take for eight men to dig a hole? No, actually it should be half. So, how many days does it take for two men to dig a hole? There is nothing like a half hole, right? Or, uh, sorry, it, it is, I worded it wrongly. How many holes would uh, these two men dig in one day? The answer is still one, you do not have half a hole. Similarly, here also you cannot have half, dimensionality half is just does not make any sense. So, one is the minimum number, so it cannot be reduced any further. That is why they are called irreducible representations. Irreducible representations are also called symmetry species because they tell you how uh, certain functions behave when subjected to each and every symmetry operation in the point group. Okay? Understood? So, that is what it is. Now, what we can do is let us try and change the basis and see what we get. Working with one basis is not enough. You work with x, y, z and be happy, go home, end the course, give A to everybody, that is not such a good idea, right? Now, what we are doing right now is like those proverbial 10 blind men trying to define an elephant. Somebody says elephant looks like a rope, somebody says elephant looks like a horse pipe, right? So, what we should do is we should see what happens when we change the basis. And let us change now to uh, maybe a basis that is more tangible to chemists than x, y and z.